is up. Welcome back. We are here at the grand finals of BlizzCon 2013. I am Isaac Azale Cummings Manley. I am joined, of course. I am Jared Vihel Colston. So excited. I'm so glad that these are the two teams in the finals. Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but these were my top two picks. Yeah. You know, here we go. Yeah? Am I a wizard, Jared? You are. Yeah, there you go. You are a wizard. And uh, guys, this is going to be a six series. We have the first place team from North America, the first place team from Europe, and I'm excited. Is everybody out there excited? <laughs> Sounds like it. So we're going to head over. We're going to check out the brackets, find out exactly how we did get here. As you can see, skill capped MIR coming out on top in Group A. And once again, as predicted, meeting in the grand finals here, it seems Group A, you know, a little bit stronger. PvP Live, LGIM, both putting up great fights in those semifinals uh, spots, but just not able to quite come out on top. No, I mean, they were close matches. I really liked seeing the LGIM games. Like, last night against yeah. Bleach Bones, and then this morning again, you know, kind of sad that they lost, but somebody has to lose. I told you, man, I'm a bit of a fanboy. I think they're, they're an exciting team to watch. They're really, really nice guys. Uh, they practice hard. They have a nice play style. It's, you know, it's all about that setup. They're not, you know, you can watch Avenger play so different than the other mages from, you know, North America and Europe. Uh, it's, it's much more about saving up the ice skills, going for those, those burst opportunities. So it's, it's really, really cool to watch. And uh, we're going to take a look at that tournament format and uh, see how we did arrive here. So it is teams randomly seated into two groups of four. They did a double elimination bracket, the top two, then advanced to the semifinals where they're matched up against, you know, first seed from Group A, second seed from Group B, and then vice versa. The first map always going to be in a grand arena. Losers will then pick from there, and the matches are going to be best of five, 15-minute time limit with dampening coming into play five minutes in. Of course, since this is the grand finals, we are going to be playing best of seven, so they're going to have a little bit of breathing room. I wonder if they're going to take that opportunity to play something risky in one of the matches. Definitely could be, or even if they don't change their, their setup, they could go with a more risky strategy, go a little bit more all in on, on someone, you know, use, use your defensives to even stay offensive, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, popping tree form or something like that early. I've, obviously, he's been playing solo force most of the time, but I'm just talking about, you know, kind of using some things that you normally would want to save a little bit more aggressively, maybe even, you know, trinketing CCs aggressively, things like that, just to try to really finish someone off and, and maybe pay for it later if you can't do it. But... Like you said, you know, if you're if you're up a game or two, it might be worth taking the risk. Absolutely, and of course, since these uh, are our last two teams on stage right now, the prize difference between first and second is so huge. I mean, look at that prize difference. I mean, $105,000 for playing WoW for two days, and uh, you know, these teams had to play a bunch of matches yesterday, but you know, it's just these two matches to determine if they're gonna be able to take away $105,000, plus, of course, those great trophies. Yeah, we're talking $60,000 difference there. That is $15,000 per map you win. That's, <laughs> that's pretty sick, man. I, I think I could live with that kind of a rate, you know? I wish Absolutely. I was getting paid that all the time, but uh, pretty sick, guys. And uh, we are gonna have these teams ready for you pretty shortly. I, I can't wait to get into it. And I mean, uh, these teams are just gonna be getting set up, making sure everything is perfect for the grand finals. And uh, you know, last time we did have these teams already meet in Group A, obviously, uh, skill cap giving MIR a, a bit of a beatdown, honestly, but uh, I don't think that we're going to see the same kind of mistakes we saw out of MIR here in the Grand Finals. They looked like a different team against PvP Live. They looked like they were on point. You know, we did have that one kind of a, that little blunder from Zunyaki. I don't think he was able to get the Spurs off in the one game that he did die. But overall, they looked like they were playing clean, crisp games. Absolutely. Very dominant play. I mean, it went back and forth a little bit. We saw some great bursts coming out from Novos here and there. But, you know, I, Min Pioke, I can't say enough how great his play has been this tournament. Yeah, they're definitely sick. So, guys, if you are ready, we are ready. We're going to have the team of introductions over at the stage. Give them a hand. Here's Zoe. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, fellow humans, you know what time it is? It's time for the fucking finals here on stage. God, I'm so pumped. We've been, we've been looking forward for that moment ever since we started. And it's going to be the two teams which a lot of the people guessing or like via the hashtag place going would have said they, they come out on top. We're going to see those in the finals and it is going to happen. They both placed first in their regions and now they're going to be trying to come first here as well at the BlizzCon. And we're going to start with the team from North America, please. A big round of applause for Skillcap. <laughs> And going up against the North American teams uh, will be uh, once more the hope from Europe. Will they take them down? We will see about that. Please give a round of applause for MIR!
Both of those teams met already during the group stages where skill cap went out victorious. Will they try to do that again? Yes, they will try, but will they manage? That is the question. And as this is potentially the last time for either of those teams to be here on stage, I would just give each and every one of you the words. Say something to your fans, say something to the people who supported you, say something to the audience, anything you want to let out before the match starts. So no, let's start with you. Uh, shout out to Vinruki for being awesome and being such a good friend. And, um the shout out to all you guys for, for really supporting me, and I didn't expect people to want me to sign their mouse pad. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the match. Sunyaki, your last words before the battle. To be honest, I just hope all you guys will enjoy the games. We'll try and do, as just, as we can do our best as we can, so you guys get in some amazing games. Uh, whatever, I don't really care how, I mean, I care a little bit how, how it will end out, but you know, we're really gonna try and give our best. Uh, I think it's gonna be some really, really amazing games, so I hope you guys, all of you guys, enjoy these games. Thank you so much. So please, team captains, shake the hands. There we go. And we're gonna get the finals rolling. Once more, a big round of applause for our teams. And we're gonna go over to our lovely casters for the finals. Thanks, Zoe. Welcome back to the caster stage, guys. I'm, once again, Isaac Azale Cummings Bentley here with Jared V. Hell Colston. And uh, we're getting hyped up here. We're getting ready. And I mean, as you said, it's a best of seven. These teams do have, you know, a little bit more room to give, a little bit more flexibility this time around than they have had earlier. And I think you can say both teams are going to be very happy that it is a best of seven. You know, generally speaking, the more games you play, uh, the more often the better team is going to win, which is really what we're looking for here. Absolutely. We want the best team to go home with that first place prize. Yeah, and I, I love that it's best of seven. You know, there's no extended match rule, anything like that. Clean slate. Best of seven, seven matches. And I mean, I know the, the grand finals normally come down to the, the, the fifth game or the seventh game. So yep. if we see a full seven games played out with both sick, of these man. teams being able to play very defensive at times, you know, we could see some long drawn out matches where the dampening kicks in and both druids are struggling to heal. Yeah, I mean, both druids having heart of the wild. You know, we could see uh, the kind of the spiking back and forth so aggressive. How do you balance going offensive, uh, staying defensive as well? You know, where are you going to prioritize what? So uh, definitely really hard decisions will have to be made if we do get to that stage. But guys, we've given you our, uh, you know, our thoughts for who's going to win uh, earlier on and stuff. We know we, we had the prediction of skill cap winning. You know, my prediction for the tournament was obviously MIR. Uh, so we want to hear your predictions, guys. Hashtag BlizzCon on Twitter. Let us know who you think is going to take it, maybe who your favorite player is, why you think they're going to win. We want to hear it. Uh, so let us know, guys. Be sure to hashtag BlizzCon so we can see that. And uh, you can always tweet to us as well. You are IMV Hell on Twitter, I do believe, yep. and I am at EGAZL. Always like to get the comments from the fans. You know, interaction is pretty fun. Yeah, and uh, BlizzCon is a great place for that. I saw so many fans swarming these teams. Like, so to said, somebody asked him to sign his mouse pad. Yeah, yeah it's, it's sweet, man. I mean, the, lots of people have been nice enough to come up to me and have a chat and, you know, say hi and everything like that, which I love. But we do have the team rosters, guys, so give a hand for a skill cap. It's going to be Soda playing the Druid, Talvadar playing that Priest and Shaman, and we have Channel on the Warlock. And I mean, these are faces you guys have seen constantly. Of course, Janimal, not, not too well known on the tournament stage, you know, hasn't been around that long, but everyone playing online knows who he is. They know he's a dominant warlock. Yeah, and that's going to change here. So MIR on the other side of things. Guys, if you would like MIR to take it home, give him a cheer. It's going to be Mipoike on the Druid, Zunyaki playing the Priest, and we have No Lifer on the Mage. I'm really impressed with No Lifer's uh, with play this entire entire tournament you know he plays very very offensive it's great to see every time that he's orbing it's exactly when he knows his team can burst and uh, he's done a lot of uh, stopping the enemies you know every single time they set up their burst and it's really important to be able to do that especially when you're playing against a druid with heart of the wild yeah. some of the times we'll see the heart of the wild buff go up and it just goes completely unused because they have to sit back and play extremely defensive yeah which is extremely important and i mean like you said sometimes especially with dampening when that comes into play sometimes being able to avoid the damage or prevent the damage is much more important than being able to like heal through that and things like that so just you know creating space for your team can really uh, save so much mana when you know you're healing for like 60 percent less 50 percent less things like this uh every little bit of damage that you stop is that much more important you know it's like when you're up to 50 percent it's twice as important to stop the damage so uh it's pretty incredible and he has been playing it very very well throughout the tournament you know as you said uh the whole team is playing really well though honestly otherwise they wouldn't be in the grand finals <laughs> uh but you know having played against these guys a lot of the time 
uh, online is pretty sick. But guys, guess what? We are moving on into the first game here. It's going to be in a grand arena. Let's hear it, guys. We have a packed crowd here. Let's hear it. So guys, it's going to be Skill Cap from North America going up against MIR from Europe, the first place team from both of the regions here battling through the brackets, uh, going up against, you know, adversity for MIR, having to come back from the lower brackets, having been beaten already once by Skill Cap. Will they be able to overcome it here, Jared? I don't know. Uh, this is going to be a tough road for them, knowing that they lost before. That has to be on their minds. Definitely does. Will they be able to have the mental fortitude to overcome that, to, you know, stay calm here, to not uh, worry about those earlier games. Uh, once again, you can see those players. It is going to be Soda playing the Druid, Talbot are on the Priest, Channel on the Warlock, MIR is going to be having Mimpoike playing the Druid, Zunyaki on the Priest, and No Lifer on that Mage. I just love, I love that picture of how happy Channel is, man. Yeah. That's just great. Uh, but anyway, guys, the countdown has begun. The gates have opened. Let's hear it. Channel going to be putting down the gateway to start things off here. We'll be playing that sack spec, and we are going to have uh, Minpoike, Zunyaki, and, and No Life are playing that shatter play, playing their, their go to comp. They haven't busted out the warrior, and uh, I guess they're, they're confident with what they, they lost last time. They can fix these mistakes. Absolutely. Now, we see the damage already coming out from Talbadar. He's doing a great job of trying to get that dot coverage all over the enemy team to get those procs. Yeah, and we do see the, the beam going down already. Earthquakes being dropped, just trying to harass this team as much as possible. At the same time, we see No Lifer building up those icicles. He's already up to three. Uh, going to be looking to go for some bursts here relatively soon. I do believe he's going to be at four now. Um, and we see Talbotar just, he doesn't want to let them have that space, doesn't want to let them have the time to get that set up. So Talbotar pushing in there, getting aggressive, dropping the thunderstorm. You can see those lava surge procs uh, coming out, just trying to harass him as much as possible. Another earthquake going down. The Halotair coming out on No Lifer. They're going to be going hard onto Zunyaki here, who is in a bit of an awkward position. Going to drop the Siphon, and it'll be perched immediately uh, and killed by that chain lightning and no life right now is going to get deep frozen uh, reflected I guess by a meta or grounding yep. totem I'm not sure yep and uh, I just talked to Soda and he is playing that meta uh, the spell reflect so uh, we're going to see that a couple times during this match yeah definitely but that's a huge one very very lucky there for Soda and we do see the clone now offensively onto Zunyaki he's down at 200k HP they're going to try to look for the CC on him in Poike he's going to be able to meld that fear from Channibles nice job by him but the clone comes in on no life or he has to trinket Zunyaki pulling back behind the pillar going to catch the NS there from in Poike, the Shroom going to have to use as well uh, as, as Zunyaki was in a lot of trouble there. He's building up the orbs once again, going to be rebuffing. Uh, Talbot are doing a good job constantly removing those buffs, and you know it's important to continually rebuff them, but you can see No Lifer has the trinket up. He has the icy veins, but he's being pushed back. He is, and it's a great job of Talbotar playing extremely offensive. I really like this Earthquake play, you know, negating the back of that pillar. Yeah, definitely, you know, harassing them, forcing them uh, to push out there. Definitely not something they want to deal with. We see Zunyaki trying to push towards Soda constantly, but he's just getting harassed so much, getting knocked back, getting rooted, uh, getting typhooned away as well. And now, once again, going to chase after Soda. There's the deep freeze. They're looking for the damage. Will it come out? He's just going to try to fear off that. And now they're going to go hard on Talbotar, I think. The CS comes out on channels. Silence on Talbotar. That's triple CC. He's in some trouble, but he pre sham A great job by Talbotar. Devouring Plague uh, being reduced so much by that. And look at Zunyaki down to 70k. He gets the disperse off, but Ironbark over Overlapped him in Poike, falling way behind. Gonna have to use a Trank here. He's gonna get NS cloned on it by Soda. Uh, that's gonna have to be trinketed. Zunyaki healing himself up behind the pillar. But now No Lifer is a target. He may have to go into the ice block. He does as the offensive beam comes out there from Talbotar. Just keeping the pressure up here as skill cap, setting the pace of the game. They really are. Zunyaki is still in trouble right now. Min Pioke is being forced to play in positions he doesn't like so far getting crowd controlled constantly by this team of Skullcats. Oh, here's the big Howl coming out there. Um, Mimpoike has popped his Heart of the Wild, but he hasn't been able to go offensive. He's going to get feared now. Uh, there could be some trouble here for Zunyaki, who has no Disperse. He's trying to run away. He's kiting with those feathers, getting back to his Hiram here. He has to stop that clone. He's unable to do it, though. The full clone coming out there onto um, Mimpoike, and now the Hex comes out onto No Life. They're going to try to set up off that. Look at the big damage coming in from Talbotar, dipping him down to 150k. The Power Ward Shield comes out. Palm goes out as well. The Iron Bark used there, uh, but now there's a bash on Mimpoike. Do they have any more CC off that. Uh, it doesn't look like it. And the Displacer comes out from Mimpoike. They're trying to cut away. They're trying to reset here. Uh, Zunyaki low on mana. He's having to heal so much to keep his team alive. And uh, the Heart of the Wild almost expiring here from Mimpoike. He hasn't been able to go offensive at all. Not at all. No Lifer is still in trouble. Playing the corner of that pillar. Great. Trying to get all those icicles up to set up his burst. But they really haven't done much after that initial burst onto Talbadar. You know, he's going to have everything back up the next time they try. Definitely will, man. He's going to have that Sham Rage. All three members of Skill Cap with that trigger remaining as well. Minpoike not having that uh, for himself. But, you know, uh, the Shatter play able to turtle uh, for a very long time. You know, with that, that Palm bouncing behind the pillar, it's a very strong. Siphine going to be killed off immediately as well. Oh, it's 
can see the bash coming out now onto Talbot, our sheep on the channels. They're trying to get this uh, 3v1 cross CC set up. Uh, there's the fear and the sheep now onto uh, Soda. The tremor was used. It was a bit, bit of a waste as the poly did come out immediately after. Sean Rage is up, but he's taking a lot of damage and Orb wasn't even used there. So there could be some trouble coming out here as they try to go for the resheep. Uh, is he going to be able to land? It doesn't look like it. The NS coming out now. And Zunioki's Zunioki very low. Oh, Zunioki, get behind the... Oh, oh wow. Oh, and you can see them just jumping up and down, cheering there. Uh, Zunyaki just got so low, and uh, I think it's this person literally just came up as he died. Yeah, and you know, that's all these games are going to be. They're going to try to force defensive cooldowns out of these teams and then catch a window when they don't have anything for it. I was scared for Talbadar at the start after that first burst came out. Yeah, me too, man. That was definitely a pretty scary situation there, but Zunyaki just uh, getting absolutely blown up by Talbadar. I mean, they, they, they got the CC out on Soda. They were obviously trying to go a bit offensive there, and, you know, uh, you know I was watching Soda get CC, and then all of, that, all of a sudden Talbadar just absolutely rocked Zunyaki, got him so, so low, and they just weren't able to pick him back up, unfortunately. Yeah, they were trying to crowd control Talbadar during that burst period, yeah. but he trinketed and immediately ascendance and started tossing those lava bursts. Yeah, yeah and obviously it was a very good choice when he talked about, uh, you know, knowing the time to go offensive and everything. Thing. So uh, obviously they did pick the right moment there. It's going to work out for Skill Cap, who now is up one game. They only need three more games, guys, and they will be your global champions here at BlizzCon. I'm so excited for these matches. I love the amazing play. Everyone, I didn't see any position that was a bad choice during that from anyone on that team. Yeah, I mean, they, they played so, so well. Uh, and we can hear the crowd getting pumped up in the background. This place is packed. And uh, we appreciate everyone coming out, showing your support. These teams uh, definitely uh, appreciate that as well. Uh, you know, it, it, they can hear you cheering. They can feel the vibrations and everything, at least. You know, they do have those soundproof headphones. But these guys know uh, that you're giving them your support, and, and they appreciate it. Absolutely. They just need to peek over the monitors. And then suddenly, you can see all these people in front of you. And it sounds like, you know, skill cap definitely the crowd favorites from day one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's that North American team. You know, the people have that kind of home team pride, right? So uh, we are here in Anaheim, California, and obviously, uh, you know, Soda being a California native as well. So that kind of adds a little something. You know, Channel uh, from Australia, uh, Talbadar, you know, he's, he's Northeast, but still, you know, it's, it's still America. It absolutely is. And, you know, with well-known players like you have Soda, who's been to so many tournaments over the years. Yeah. Um, as long as I can remember, you know, all those MLGs way back yep. in the day and stuff, and he's always that that anchor for the team, that healer. Yeah, I mean, the first MLG I went to, actually, you know, our team played against Soda in, uh, in lower bracket finals. Yeah? Yeah, there you go, man. It was first tournament for him, first tournament for me. You know, Ben Ruki, you know, showed, gave him a shout out. He was at the, the second tournament. You know, there's a, there's a number of guys who have been, you know, right at the top for since 2008. Absolutely, and it's great to see him on stage, and that has to play a role into why they're the crowd favorites. You know, having somebody like Soda, just being that rock on the team that you can always count on if you want to follow like long tournament experience and yeah. follow his story. And we have streamers years. here as well, you know, both Soda yeah. and Talbadar stream. Uh, people love to tune in to them, you know, very fun streams to watch as well. So, you know, you develop some more fans there and, uh, you know, they're just great guys. They're great players and they're, you know, why wouldn't they have a lot of fans? Yeah, and the one thing I love about WoW Esports now is that streaming it plays such a big role in everything now. Yeah. I mean, you can make a huge fan base, you know, you can, you can pitch your, uh, your support from all your fans, you know, just constantly, every single day. And yeah. not only that, you can see high-level play whenever you want now. Yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you definitely have a, a lot of access to that that you didn't in the past, so uh, it's pretty sweet. Uh, we are just waiting for that map pick here from uh, MIR. It is obviously going to be there. Uh, their ability to do that. And I do believe that we have to go through all the maps before we can repick a map. Uh, so if we go to the end, I think that's how it works. I'm not positive. We'll get confirmation on that for you guys. But I do believe that's how it works. And, uh, you know, if you were MIR, what map would you be going for? Where do you think the advantage lies for them? I mean, you probably don't want to go on a, a two-level map no, because not at all. So Thunderstorm. Yeah, I have a feeling maybe Tolveron at this point, they played really well. Yeah. And uh, when they scored the kill on Novos in the last uh, matches, you know, that was... That was the moment for me that I knew that, that they loved this map. They were able to push up, play very offensively, yeah. pull the healer off of the, off of the pillar. Um, I would say probably Tolveron. Yeah, I think Tolveron's a good choice for sure. You know, do you think we maybe see Rune's lore on is in there as well? I mean, yeah. I think that might not be a bad decision. But yeah, Tolveron seems to really suit them. I agree. Um, you know, you can you can obviously push in really hard, but you can you know they they like to have those moments when they're spreading out and they're pulling back as well. They're trying to recover. They're trying to wait for those those proper cooldowns to go in for the burst again. And I think that um, that you know also suits that map because you know the pillars are so big. It's it's the largest map there is. So uh, you can kind of have a bit of both, and I think it, it does suit them quite well. Yeah, Min Poike just doing a great job on that map. Oh, looks like it is going to be Ruins of Lordaeron, though. And uh, I like 
uh, watching the healers on this map because uh, playing as a druid, you know, you could sit way back. You can sit at that 40 yards, you know, roll those hots on all the people on your team. But you know at some point you're going to have to push up. You're going to have to do some crowd control. Yep, definitely. But we are now in the game, guys. It's going to be Runes of Lord on game two of your BlizzCon 2013 Grand Finals. Skill cap, first place from North America going up against MIR. They're going to be the first place European team. We have Talbotar on the Shaman. Chanimal playing that Warlock. Soda going to be the Restoration Druid for Skill cap. And MIR is going to have Zunyaki on the Shadow Priest. No Lifer playing that Frost Mage. And Minpoike playing the Restoration Shaman. So let these teams hear it, guys. We're going into the game. Yeah, it's interesting to see the amount of hit points on uh, on the team of Skill Cap just compared. You know, they're both going to have uh, points left. While Zunyaki's team is going to, plus Channel is going to provide it for his team. But like, look at the hit points difference. Yeah, yeah, pretty big. Kalbadar yeah. has a lot of hit points. Definitely does, man. Uh, and we are going to have uh, Skill Cap pushing up here, taking the tomb right off the bat. We have Talbotar just trying to get aggressive. Going to drop that Earth Grab totem. Uh, maybe start working away on this Water Ellie. You can see it's going to be dotted up there pretty quickly. Uh, the Gateway obviously did already go down for Channimals. He's going to be pushing in, trying to make something happen. We'll follow him out as the, the Temporal Shield already has to go up there. And Canner's Ward being popped here for No Lifer as well. So he's going to have that available. Meld was used by Minpoike to avoid that first fear. The second one going to land there onto Zunyaki. Uh, now a clone comes out on No Lifer. Look at that UA dispel being caught by Minpoike as he wants to. Uh, keep his team aggressive early on. He does, and there goes the water elemental pet, you know, dying pretty quickly early in the match. No Lifer is going to have to find some breathing room where he can resummon the pet. There he goes. Now I'm not going to be contended right there as he gets the, the pet off. Yeah, and we see Demon Soul has been popular. Look at Zunyaki already getting pretty low here. Ironbark is up. Will he have to disperse this early on? He definitely doesn't want to. Uh, and it looks like he is going to be able to hold that. So a good job by him, uh, knowing that he can do that. But Mimpoike, it's going to cost him his trinket. No lifer without a trinket as well. And Zunyaki, the pressure not stopping here. Uh, will this map have backfired for them? There's a Hall of Terror. Beam goes down. He's going to have to disperse, I think. The massive burst does come in. He catches a big heal at the same time, though, looking like he's going to be okay. But now Mimpoike, the one under fire, down to 300k. He's doing a good job picking his team back up. But look at this pressure now. Soda going to get aggressive. Uh, he has his Heart of the Wild up. You can see those Moonfires getting spread around. Everyone taking a ton of pressure here. You can see the play style differences between these two Druids. Mimpoike using his Heart of the Wild defensively while Soda here just spamming out those Moonfires trying to do as much damage as he possibly can. And now the Tranquility with the Heart of the Wild going to be enough to finally stabilize this MIR team. Yeah, that was a lot of healing in Mimpoike right there. But the Water Elemental looks like it might fall again. So much damage coming out from both teams. Talbadar. look at Talbadar. Yeah, Talbadar with the silence. He couldn't get the Sharm Rage up preemptively for this one. The DP goes down. Down. He's taking a lot of damage. He's trying to Ghost Wolf Kite out of there. Soda now out of the CC. Will be able to get him some big heals. And uh, Sham Rage, you know, up in 20 seconds. So he should have that available. The Sentence is going to be popped here. Spearwalker's Grace goes up. He's trying to go hard onto Zunyaki. Zunyaki in trouble. Will he just go down? He needs to disperse. He disperse comes up, but he still dies at 4K. He needs to get the heals of Soul Drake coming in. This could be it. Look at that oh, close coming in. The Cyclone comes in from Soda. And they need to time the burst. Will it be lined up in time? No. Oh, Mipoke wow. wins the heal. The Ice blocks the bash. The Fear Run comes out from Zunyaki, and he is going to survive for now, oh, but for wow. how long? That was incredible, excellent. Wow, they were both rushing to get the heal and the damage off as that Cyclone ended. That was just incredible play from both teams. Talbotar just t slightly mistiming that lightning bolt. It would have net them the second game, but he's unable to do it. But look at No Lifer. The pressure not stopping here. No Lifer down, uh, pretty low on HP. I mean, Poike has no block. His trinket's still down on cooldown. And really, MIR has had got nothing rolling this game. Uh, they haven't been able to force anything. No Lifer going to get actually life gripped into the entrance there. I mean, Poike once again CC'd, and they're just trying to uh, not let him use his trinket. So he does uh, meld that, uh, that fear, and that's a good job by him. But Still, he has a lot of work to do. Zunyaki getting dangerously low. He doesn't have Disperse. He's trying to cut away, spamming those feathers, trying to get out of there. But Minpoike could get split up from him. Minpoike into the fear. No Lifer now in trouble. No Lifer is going to be down to 130k, 60k. Will he get the block off? He does. But this pressure is not stopping Soda into the poly. But does it even matter? They have nothing going. And Zunyaki now caught in the middle of the map. He's going to be beamed on by Talbadar. Trying to keep that damage rolling. Channels spreading dots everywhere. Just keeping this pressure rolling. They're going to try to make a swap onto Channels. We see the Deep Freeze comes in. He's dipped down about 400k but he's not in much trouble. Yeah, I mean, Poike had to trinket during that burst earlier. Great job by Soda tossing out those Cyclones and forcing that trinket. No Lifer taking a lot of damage right now, but Min Poike is in perfect position sitting back and, oh, looks like he's going to push up right now and try to play a little offensive as he does eat but that full clone. But there's the clone from Soda and Channels. You know, they did force his healing cooldowns there. Uh, you know, as he did get deep frozen, there was the silence onto Soda. He got DP, but look at Zunyaki. Zunyaki in a lot of trouble here. Still no disperse. He's going to go down, I think. 10k HP, and he's going at 30k. He 
He cannot oh. survive. The trinket is not there for Minpoike. He can't get him up. And that is going to be the second game going to skill capped. So does my MVP so far. We saw him rush over with that bash on him in Pioke, knowing that he didn't have, you know, right out of that cyclone. It was incredible. They know he didn't have the trinket up, followed by a fear on Channel. And look at those guys. They are so happy right now. Yeah, and uh, who can blame them? They're two games away. They're already up two. And, you know, the pressure really is going to start taking its toll here on MIR. You lose those two first games, you know uh, that the room for error is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And that second game did not look good for MIR. They were just getting dominated start to finish. I mean, really, what did they get done offensively? Almost yeah, nothing. They, they got one Shamanistic Rage. They set up some burst for the second when uh, when Talbadar did not have a Shamanistic Rage up, but they hardly used any defensive cooldowns, keeping them up. Yeah, just an incredible play here from Skillcap. They've been asserting their dominance the entire tournament, and they're looking strong. They're looking poised, but, you know, they haven't done it just yet. We are going to have the next map pick once again here uh, coming out from MIR, but where do they go now? Do they go to Tolveron? Uh, do they, you know, I mean, the problem is, we talked about Blade's Edge. We feel Blade's Edge, you know, and Dalaran probably have the advantage uh, in skill cap side. Absolutely. And those maps have not been played yet. You know, if you go to Tolveron, even if you win on Tolveron, skill cap probably picks Blades, and then they have a, you know, a pretty nice uh, map there, you know, mm -hmm. something to fall back on. So it's looking tough. They, I, I feel like MIR has to win this next map. They absolutely do. It doesn't matter what map they pick at this point, because they're going to have to face off on Dalaran or Blade's Edge at some point. Yeah, I mean, Scary. it's just you can't let the momentum get too out of control. The players, you know, getting so pumped up. Uh, they're so excited. They're playing so well. And, it, you know, if you let that continue too long, I think it just becomes a little bit too much to overcome. So, yeah. you know, getting down two games in the grand finals, you know, definitely not the start MIR was hoping for. Uh, but, you know, we, we heard Zunyaki wants to focus on, you know, on giving the best games that he can to the crowd, which is very commendable. You know, the, he obviously cares about winning too. But, you know, they're focusing, they're saying, they're focusing more on just playing their best and the results will follow. Absolutely. And that's the way to think you know, coming into this type of match. And, you know, the more I think about Blade's Edge and Soda's team, this it's really scary playing against them. I mean, look yep. at all the, the area denial they have, the gateway, the knockoffs. The, there's so much. I mean, with yep. double knockoffs, you know, one with the Druid and uh, one with the, the uh, Ellie Shaman. I mean, it's, they can do so much. That is so scary. And yep. plus Dalaran, even though they added those back stairs, if you toss a healer off and he's out of line of sight, even for a moment, we saw the kills happen extremely fast in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, e even just not the healer, just knock No Lifer into the corner and burst him there. You know, you have a frost shock on him, he has to kind of waddle back. It's, it's a pretty tough, man. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Those are going to be some, some rough maps. And I think that uh, also you have to keep in mind, you can use Thunderstorm while you're deep frozen. Even yep. if you're just able to break up a little bit of damage, knock them off the bridge. You know, that's, that's a burst opportunity gone. That's uh, one of your kill chances gone. And really, we've seen the windows are small for these kills. You know, you have to get through all the cooldowns. Skill cap rotates them very well. The, the mistakes are, are few and far between for this team. So it's like, you know, if you get through Shaman Rage, you get through Trinket, and then you have your one kind of kill opportunity and you get punted off the bridge during that deep freeze, well, guess exactly. what? You're back to square yeah. one. You have to now get through Shambridge again. You have to now get through the Trinket again. And uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. But guys, they are choosing Dalaran Arena, so they disagree with me. Let's hear some noise, guys. This is going to be game three. It's skill cap looking to put it to match point. Can they do it? And MIR looking to battle back, looking to stay strong here. Uh, are they going to make some changes? And wow, they are. Uh, we are going to see Zunyaki swapping it up. He's bringing in the Warrior. This is what we had talked about at the start of the tournament. Uh, you know, so. They're feeling they cannot take it home with the shatter play anymore. I mean, we're seeing this big comp change, and I feel like this is a, a good choice. It is, it is. I think the mass uh, spell reflection and the spell reflection means they're going to have a lot more trouble trying to stick on their target yeah. because they were they were pretty able to uh, to train Zuniaki, you know, just dump a ton of damage into him nonstop, even through those dispersions. I mean that. That, what was he at, like a thousand hit points? Yeah, he, oh, he, was, wow. he was so dangerously low. I mean, that game almost ended instantly. Uh, but you know, Chanwell, Talbot, or Soda, I know uh, from speaking to them, from speaking to the, the teammates, they have practiced uh, massively against this comp. They're feeling extremely confident against it. So although it is one of the strongest comps, uh, because so many people play it, they have a good chance to practice against it. So skill cap up 2-0 in the grand finals. Let's hear some noise. Chanwell throwing down that gateway. Skill cap looking to push it to match point. And Bro Yaki here is going to be busted out. Uh, going to be thrown in that route right off the bat. He wants to get aggressive but uh, his target looking like he wanted to be Channimals, but Channimal playing in a great spot, and really it's kind of scary to charge down there against this LSD. Talbot are going to be looking for those knockoffs.
Aatrox. You can see him trying to push it forward. Maybe go for that Thunderstorm onto him. Uh, he's going to go into Ghost Wolf. He does throw that root out onto Zunyaki, but that's going to be intervened out of. And Zunyaki uh, going to be pushing forward. But really, uh, what target do you think he's going to want to be going for? He can't go on anything. If he pushes up, he's going to be out of line of sight. He can't push behind uh, those boxes whatsoever because Min Pioke, Pioke Oh, is, there's uh, the Leap Fear onto, uh, onto Soda. Uh, but he is in range of Tremor. Talbotar pulling back very quickly there. Shockwave coming out now uh, onto Channel there. Uh, it is the Stormbolt as well. The Deep Freeze coming out onto Soda into the Poly. They're going to be going hard onto Talbotar. Now they're swapping over on Channel as the Sea Smash does go up. Um, and Poike taking a little bit of damage, but uh, he is going to pop that Innervate early on. I think it's a good choice. You know, may as well yeah. get that rolling. Yeah, and that was from a UA dispel. He's trying to clean off as many UAs as he can, but look, Channel just tossing it right back up. They're almost doing nothing to Min Poike. Oh, there we go. And uh, just as I say that, Soda pushes up for a Cyclone. Yeah, and look at No Life for dipping pretty low here. He's going to be dropping the Ring of Frost. The MCS goes out. He's going to Sheep Channel off that. Uh, that's going to be trinketed or perhaps just dispelled instantly there by Soda. Uh, we do see No Life for forcing the block at the same time. Uh, Zunyaki, you know, gets knocked back down. We talked about those thunderstorms, and here it is. Now the Ascendance has been popped. Spearwalker's Grace is up. Talbotar wants to get some damage done. Zunyaki, though, LOSing him, uh, shutting down everything there. I uh, wasn't really able to get any damage off, and Talbotar dipping a little bit. There's the full sheep on his Soda. Talbotar may have overextended a little bit here. Uh, he does pop the Sham Rage, taking a lot of damage, but No Life for at the same time. He's the one getting in more trouble. The Orb comes out. Deep Freeze on Soda. Nice CC, and the Sham Rage about to expire here. Full clone off that. Soda still sitting through this. Is this the right choice? He trinkets late. Uh, the Anis comes out. Sham jo wow. Rage uh, does expire there. So, wow, you know, uh, playing it a little bit uh, tight to the chest there with Soda, you know, trying to get a little bit greedy with that trinket. It has to use it. But now, uh, Zunyaki popping die by the sword. Last Sand has to come out. He's in trouble. The Halterra goes down. Last Sand will expire here pretty shortly. Min Boyke still CC. He needs to be healed up. Last Sand about to drop. He could be going down here. The shield is used preemptively. 10k HP. He catches the swift mend. He looks wow. like he will survive for now, but more CC on Min Boyke. He's feared. The shield wall is about to expire. It does go down, and he's trying to LOS. He's trying to stay alive. If any more damage comes in, this could be it. Heart of the Wild Bomb by Soda. He's trying to finish him off. 40k, 30k. And Moonfire is coming in. Mass Spell Reflect. Spell Reflect goes up. Soul Drain coming oh. in. He survives. He's alive, and they're still fighting. Soda triggering offensively there. Can they turn it around? Oh, wow. And that Heart of the Wild isn't going to stay up too much longer as we see Talbotar trying to dump as much damage as he can into No Lifer. As uh, not able to, though, down to half. Look at that. Min Pioke's team is in trouble right now. We see the trinket come out from No Life. But look at Talbadar. He's taking a lot of damage. He has, uh, you know, he does have a Sham Rage back up at Soda. No trinket available, getting so aggressive there. Uh, do you think they can capitalize on this? I don't know. They're going to have to CC chain off of that onto Soda. They had some good ones going, but man. Zuniaki barely lived during that. Yeah, that was crazy. Down to 10,000 HP at multiple points during that. You know, such a smart decision. Pre-shield walling that, knowing his last stand was about to fall, he definitely would have gone down, uh, you know, had he not done that. And just great job kiting by him as well. But good CC, you know, to force all those cooldowns. And uh, Zuniaki's not going to have any of that available for quite some time. No trinket on anyone except Minpoike. And look at No Life for getting spiked down here. Uh, this Shockwave does come out on the both the DPS. That's going to shut down that first attempt. But Zuniaki now is going to be the target. He's out in the middle of the map here. And Soda oh. into the Pulse Chief. They're going to be looking to go on channels. Channels, though, porting out of there, excuse me, immediately. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, and he got, the second he saw that CC come out on Soda and Talbotar. See, this is kind of a dangerous situation, as he is playing Stormbolt and able to stun Channel right there, but not being able to do much off of that. You know, this is a risky position for this warrior to be in. Yeah, it definitely is, but uh, as we do see, the Trinket just came back up for Soda. That is huge. They're going to feel a lot more confident now uh, about living through these burst attempts here from this warrior mage, but, you know, dampening, going to be a different story this time around. Uh, you know, I'm not sure on the time on that, but it is, you know, going to be up here in about a minute, I uh, can see now, and uh, I think that the, you know, it's going to go a bit more into the favor of MIR as, as that uh, that does come up. Yeah, Zuniaki, I haven't seen him toss out too many Shockwaves so far this match. Um, oh, there's there's a clone reflected on his Soda. Could they make something happen off of this? Channel could be uh, the target, but no, they're going to swap it over on a Talbotar. There's the MCS, the Shockwave, uh, you know, is going to be out on one of the DPS. We see a Stormball on the other, Deep Freeze on his Soda. Soda going to get through that, but he's uh, getting tanked by this Orb right now. He's down about half HP, but no follow-up CC coming out on Soda. I think Talbotar should be okay, but still sitting pretty low. Yeah, and that was a lot of cooldowns out of Zuniaki. That was pretty much it offensively that he had. You know, he has those both those trinkets up, just being able to put out so much damage with that recklessness. But oh, but look at this damage down to 100,000 HP. Gonna have to pop that die by the sword for that damage reduction once again. We can see Shield Wall up in 27. Uh, Mass Spell Reflect up in 20. He needs to get out of there. Nice Coax comes in. They're trying to see Seaman Poike. He's gonna have to trinket that Shockwave coming out to deny the reclone from Soda. A good job there breaking it up. Uh, but we do see Talbot are gonna be sheeped off. He's gonna get dispelled out of that. Uh, Min Poike, you know, doing a good job healing uh, Zunyaki back up. But I mean, look at this pressure. They're just standing on top of him. It's so hard. Where does he go? The Iron Bar coming up now uh, is gonna be enough to 
Phoenix probably try to stabilize, hopefully top him back off, but look at the damage coming from Talbot are just non-stop. They just cannot top him back off. Now the fear, the intimidating shout comes out. MCS slimed at the same time. He can't tremor it. Talbot could be in some trouble here. Talbot are taking a lot of damage, but so is Zunyaki and Soda. Gonna get deep frozen off that. Talbot does get a nice shockwave though. Gonna keep himself alive. Wow, that was a great job right there. Talbadar not having to use anything, especially because his shamanistic rage wasn't even back up at that point. As we see the Hex going out on a night, no lifer. Minpoike dispelling that UA, taking a lot of damage down to half himself. Yeah, and Chanimal going to be in the shockwave there. He doesn't have Blood Horror. His port's going to be up in a bit, uh, but he is, you know, susceptible right now. Soda is in the clone, but I don't think they're going to need to use any trinkets on this. There's the MCS on the Talbadar. Will they swap it back onto him with that? No, it doesn't look like it, but Minpoike, you know, starting to struggle a little bit. Going to have to use the NS there. He's rotting low. No lifer getting low. Now they're going to swap it over onto uh, Zunyaki. We see, see the Tranquility coming out. Good choice with the Soul of the Force. Should top his team back off, but you know, that is a, a pretty important cooldown gone against such a, a huge spread pressure comp. It really is, especially playing Soul of the Forest, that Tranquility is just massive. Yeah, there's the deep freeze on Asota. They're going to go for the ring. Can they land it? The palm ring comes in. They're going to swap it over onto, uh, onto a Talbadar right now. We can see Talbadar is that main target, but they're going to clone him off. They're going to swap it now over onto Channel. The orb is out. He's taking a lot of damage. He could go down. He ports out just in time. We did see that Stormbolt out there. Do they have any follow-up CC? Maybe a Shockwave here for Soda. Doesn't look like it, but Channel is still staying very, very low. He's in some trouble, but they're going to swap it over on Zunyaki. He got bashed behind the pillar. MCS on him in Poike. Into the fear. He has no trinket. Zunyaki's going to have to be careful here as his healer is CC'd for quite some time. And, you know, there may be follow-up CC coming in, so he needs to play safe, and he's doing so. He's trying to stop uh, Channel from doing anything, but look at No Life right now. Getting dipped down there by Talbadar. Talbadar just swapping it around, you know, uh, just seemingly at will able to bring anyone low to HP. It really is. Every single time I see those Lava Birds come oh, out, but, but look at this damage. Silence on top of him, taking so much damage from that warrior as he tries to struggle to get back in line of sight of Soda, and there he goes. Oh, the Shockwave hits both the Shaman and Soda. Wow, he is in trouble. Yeah, and uh, the Shaman Rage was used. There's a DR clone out on Channel. We see that MIR has stabilized for now, but look at those procs coming out there from Talbadar. Going to be able to dip uh, Zunyaki down pretty low. He says, screw this. He's going to just switch it over onto uh, Channel, uh, get himself back into a better spot, but he is cloned off. And I mean, Iron Bark's up, but no hots. Can they get CC on him in Poike? They can. There's the clone. Oh, I think so he has to trinket. He trinkets immediately, but, but the shield wall comes out. Will it be enough? A 50k HP there briefly. We see the Ring of Frost on his soda. Talbadar taking a lot of damage as well. They're trying to switch it around, but they need more CC. There's a, a Disorient on his soda. Can they get anything else off? that doesn't look like it just yet but the, uh, we see the recklessness and everything being popped here now by Zunyaki he's trying to go offensive but he's so low is this the right choice he's just going to try to all in a little bit here now swapping him back over on a channel putting him into the shockwave but he's going to get blood horde off and those cooldowns really did not accomplish much oh that was a scary situation from scale capped we saw soda push up trying to get those offensive clones and get deeped into a ring he had to trinket the very end of the ring so it was an, it, a uh, that trinket use was uh kind of rough right there yeah, definitely. But I mean, sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to be uh, willing to make those split decisions, uh, second decisions to be able to keep your team alive. And Channel taking a little bit of damage, maybe overextending here. He's kind of back behind the pillar. If he gets stunned, he could be in some trouble. Do they have any CC for Soda? Channel sitting pretty low, but so is Nightlifer. And No Lifer taking the worst of this exchange is going to be forced into the ice block, even with the temporal up right now. We can see Ascendance was popped there uh, by Talbadar. Talbadar has the Spearwalker's Grace up as well. A new Water Elemental being summoned here. Uh, can they get anything done with this? Perhaps I'm going to go for some CC on Soda. Nope, but he's going to shift that Nova right away. Now there's a fear. The MCS deep on Talbotar. He's going to trick it and tremor. Soda out of that fear. Quick reactions there by Talbotar. Uh, is going to, you know save him from using more cooldowns. He absolutely is, and this warrior is just taking so much damage this entire fight. He's always in line of sight of one of those casters. Just so much damage coming out. As you can see, the rip all over everyone. Oh, here's Heart Great. of Wild. This has been key, but nice. He knocks him back. The Typhoon comes out, putting Triple him into ring. the ring, and that is a huge ring, and Talbotar's in some trouble, and we see uh, the dampening stacking up so high now. Talbotar having to use that Shaman Rage so early. The clone comes out on Soda. Do they have anything off that? Talbotar is dipping low, and Hots are going to start doing nothing here. The MCS comes out on Talbotar, um, and we see No Life are getting low as well. It Spell Reflect coming up there from uh, Broyaki, but it's a little bit too late to reflect the clone. Talbotar, though, into the Storm Bowl. He's in trouble, but so is Zunyaki. Zunyaki is at about 200k HP. Minboike into the fear. No life for low as well. Uh, we're, we're seeing trouble on both sides here. Soda still has that Heart of the Wild active, but they're all caught in triple shockwave. That's huge. The lower cooldown is going to be a big part as wow. well, but they need to get away. They need to recover. Uh, get back out of there. They really do. Soda had to sit through such a long CC chain right there because of that trinket he had to use earlier. Minpoike is down oh, to half Yes, so instantly on the tranquility. This could be it. He's trying to get out of there. Lavaverse coming in. Shadow Fury. This is going to be it. 3K. Oh, He's going to wow. go down. The trinket comes out. It is not enough. And skill count. Oh, take another game. That was incredible. That spell lock. Wow.
just instantly locking him on the Tranquility. He had to go for it. There was no other way to catch up. He gets the Soul of Force. He goes for the Trank. It's not enough. Channel's too fast, locking him out instantly. He's trying to get away behind the pillar. The Shadow Fury comes in. The Trinket comes in, but it's too little, too late. It was enough to hold him in line of sight to get that Lava Burst off. That was all they needed. They're able to get the third straight match, and that is just massive. They're now at game point, guys. Skill cap, one game away from being your global champions. Oh, that is incredible. Oh, now you have to wonder what's going through MIR's head. What map are they going to pick? It seems like their only choice at this point is probably Tiger's Peak, but I didn't think they played that well on that map so far this tournament. I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's tough. It's like, at this point, how do, you, how do you stay positive? You know what I mean? You just lost three strike games. You worked so hard to get here. Uh, you know, they, they've basically lost six games in a row now to this team in this tournament, and now they have to win four in a row. Hey, if there's any team that can do it at this tournament, I would say it's MIR. I, I would agree. I mean, you know, they were, they were I, I predicted them to win. You know, I definitely thought they were capable of it. Uh, but, you know, skill cap just looking so bulletproof. It, you know, it's just they, they seem to have such a solid grasp, uh, especially with these tournament rules. I think that you know, with the change on dampening and everything, they're, they're adjusting their play style so much to fit that. I think that the way Toto uses Heart of the Wild, I think it's just, you know, I, th I really feel like it's making a difference. You know, in Poike, we're seeing him use Heart of the Wild defensively, which I understand, you know, that's more classically what a lot of people do online and everything like that. They use it more of a defensive cooldown. But here it's like, it makes such a big difference when you're in dampening. Damage is more effective than healing. Absolutely. And, you know, he's using, he's timing out his soul, of, his heart of the wild, so that the second one comes up at, at such a key time. It, it's when uh, you see that the dampening is basically getting to a point where it's just, it's almost impossible to heal through. It's like it just gets to this point where it's like 10 minutes in, the heart of the wild comes back up. And they seem to win every game at that point. Absolutely. And it, it's interesting to see the dynamic of cooldowns, especially where we are going to be playing shorter matches historically than in the past. You know, our 15-minute time rule means something with a six-minute cooldown, you know, like yeah. Heart of the Wild. You know, if you use it at the start, then you have another chance later in the match, yep. which is what we've been seeing. Definitely. Uh, but we are going to be going into what potentially could be the last game of the series. Skill Cap looking to claim their global championship title, looking to take home that $105,000. Let them make some noise. Let's hear it, guys. If you want Skill Cap to win, we're going into Tolveron Arena. That is the choice here for MIR. They need to win here. Can they do it? If you'd like MIR to start the comeback, give them a cheer, guys. I want to see some. MIR put some hard CC chains onto Soda, force that trinket early, and then just follow up with more CC and kill Talbadar when his uh, Shamanistic Rage is down. Yeah, I definitely agree, man. The gateway coming out here immediately now. We can see it's uh, going to be a nice gate there across map from Channel and Broyaki going to be charging out. What will he be able to get done this time around? We're going to see that Stormbolt followed up by the Shockwave onto Talbadar, just trying to uh, lock him down right at the start. Zuniac? Okay, never mind. Um, so. Anyway, everything looks fine, and uh, he is going to be just t going over onto Channel now, trying to just maybe deny some of that CC that was so key, uh, you know, coming out on the main Poike uh, last game. So it looked like they went on Talbadar a lot more at the beginning of the match in the last few rounds, and now it looks like they're going to start to try to start on uh, Channel's uh, right from the beginning. And, oh, there's you know, the fear. Now the swap can come on into Talbadar. Uh, they did have the trinket immediately, but he can't get in tremor range, so he had to sit that down to 200k HP is, ta is uh, Talbadar. And we see a deep freeze coming out onto Soda. So uh, a pretty nice start there, you know, denying that tremor, forcing the trinket out uh, with that intimidating shout. That, that was great. You know, Soda choosing not to uh, trinket whatsoever. We see the Stormlash totem come out by Talbadar as he does have that ascendance up. Lots but of damage on MP. Okay. Oh, wow. Down to 150,000 health. And they're going to try to set up out of this, man. They're going to look for that fear. Can they get it? Uh, it doesn't look like a note that we saw Zunyaki getting swapped over onto channels trying to shut down that fear. So, I mean, Poike will be okay for now, but already getting that block out of the way is massive. Even if they don't want to go for a kill on him, you can't get out of CC now. And the Tranquility having to be used there uh, very early on. Uh, we can see him in Poike just trying to kite away, trying to play defensive, and this is very much so his playstyle. Yeah, uh, Talbadar gets locked right there, you know, trying to toss out a bunch of damage, and it looks like the, the choice to go on Min Poike was awesome, except look at that, he didn't even have to trinket there. Yeah, yeah, definitely great, but, uh, you know, the ice block being used is just so big. Uh, so we do see uh, Zunyaki uh, out in the middle of the map, going to be rooted. Uh, Chanimal kind of just having those peels coming out from his teammate, helping him deal with that warrior, and, you know, doing a good job spreading out the damage anyway, keeping those dots rolling on everyone, you know, even with this warrior kind of sitting on his back, and Talbadar now uh, is going to be put into that Cyclone. He's going to be stuck in that. It was Frost Nova to add a little less. And uh, maybe they're going to try to look for a swap it over onto him because we see that Soda yeah. now is also into a Cyclone. So uh, they're not really getting any damage out just yet, but there's a double Shockwave onto both the DPS. Blood Horror going to be able to land, though, on Zunyaki. Yeah, Soda's having some problems with those spell reflections.
instructions. That's the second clone we've seen reflected so far. Of course, uh, Zuniaki is going to be the target since he's in the center the whole time. Talbador was pushed up extremely offensive, look and at, I thought that they were going to punish him. Yeah, look at No Lifer, though. He was down to about 200k, gets the Temporal up. AoE Spell Reflect coming out as well. Going to pull back. We see Mimpoike was into the Howl there. Uh, there's the Temporal falling, so he is going to be in a lot of trouble. The Ice Block is forced there. Uh, fear coming out onto Mimpoike. He's going to be feared again off that. They're going to dot him up. Maybe they'll just swap it over onto him. We saw the clone there out onto uh, Zunyaki. Uh, no Lifer trying to cut away here. He's trying to retreat, trying to get healed back up. But Talbador is in hot pursuit. You see the Lava Surge proc up on him, bringing him down about 200k. The clone comes out on Mimpoike. He's going to have to NS heal there as well. Uh, now he's MCS into a Shadow Fury. They're shutting him down so much. Mimpoike falling desperately far behind here. Uh, will he be able to catch back up? They're going to try to turn around with the Frost Orb. The Shockwave comes out onto Soda. We see there's that Trinket coming out from Talbadar. Sham Rage uses immediately as well. And the Storm Bolt coming out there onto Chanimal. But look at Zunyaki now. Going to be cloned low. Mimpoike, uh, he's, a, he's a little bit low as well. He's being forced back now. And they're going to try to swap it over onto Zunyaki here. He's down dangerously low. 100k. He may have the Shield Wall here. Uh, we see the parry going up. There's a Bash on Mimpoike. He's not trinketing just yet. MCS. Oh, a CS, unfortunately, onto a Zunyaki. That could have meant the kill if they had it, but unfortunately, they, they do not. But the fear comes out, it doesn't matter. It's over. They've done it. Skill cap are your 2013 BlizzCon Global Champions. No shield wall coming out. And that is going to be that. Janimal, Talvinar, Soda, too strong, crushing through the tournament, uh, dropping a, a, not, no series at all, man. They just, they were untouchable the whole time. Oh, wow. This was their tournament to win. They came in as the number one seed. It was one of our predictions to be in the grand finals against MIR. And it, just watching them destroy MIR yesterday and destroy them again on stage. Wow. Just incredible play from all three members, man. Uh, I thought he was going to be able to live there, but able to get the kill regardless. Just the burst coming in from Talbadar was just too much. Zunyaki not expecting it, unable to get the shield all up before that Shadow Fury came out. And you can see the teams rejoicing, their friends rushing up on stage Even uh, with them. A Blood Elf is randomly there. Who knows who that is? And <laughs> this is one of my, this is one of the greatest stories in World of Warcraft, yeah. this group of friends, I yeah. would say. They've been together for so long, played on teams, played against each other, and this camaraderie right here. Look at all those guys. Yeah, it's awesome, man. So uh, just so you can see, they're just so, so happy and rightfully so. Going to be going home, not only with the, the $105,000, but with the knowledge that they're the best team in the world and those trophies that they're going to be able to take home. They're going to have those forever. Something definitely going to want to cherish. So just awesome, awesome stuff. So happy for these guys. Uh, you know, they've worked hard. They've been here many times. And, you know, Soda coming so close in the past, losing in the grand finals, you know, in the final game. Uh, now, you know, has his sweet, sweet revenge, you know, uh, ironically playing the comp that he lost to uh, last BlizzCon. So, you know, maybe that's what he needs to do. You know, Talbadar uh, coming to BlizzCon after BlizzCon, not getting the results that he wanted in the past. And now uh, for him as well, you know, very, very happy for these guys. Uh, this is great validation for these guys. I mean, when you go through the whole tournament year and you play those online tournaments, yeah. you know, you get your chances to prove yourself. But in the end, really doesn't matter when it comes down to the amount of prize pool for BlizzCon. $105,000 yeah. these guys won. Pretty, pretty incredible, guys. But uh, also, you know, obviously, you know, big congratulations to Skillcap. But guys, let's hear a big round of applause for our second place finishers. MIR going to be taking home 45K, putting up a great performance, giving us some very exciting games and nothing to be ashamed about here. You know, one of the very best teams in the world, proving that time and time again throughout the tournament. You know, all three players playing very, very well. Uh, it wasn't enough here this time, but they'll be back. Oh, absolutely. You know, we've seen those names a lot. Tsuniyaki told us that he just wanted to show us good games. And... You definitely did. Yeah, you got to respect that, man. You got to respect that kind of attitude. Uh, you know, too many people, uh, you know, can get down on themselves about this stuff. And, you know, he said, you know, they were going to give it their best and uh, they were going to try to show games and they were able to do that. So congratulations to them as well, taking home $45,000. That does mean our third and fourth place finishers are going to be uh, PVP Live as well as uh, LGIM. So they're going to both take home $19,500, about $190K given out this weekend overall just for the World of Warcraft tournament. You know, obviously big prizes being given out for StarCraft as well. Uh, so, you know, big things happening at BlizzCon. Very exciting stuff. Absolutely. And I loved watching the Hearthstone tournament yeah. also on our stage. You know, yeah. hey, my boy Artosis won. I called yeah. that from the beginning. Oh, wow. There you go, Absolutely. man. So pretty sick. You know, congratulations to him as well, of course. Uh, but yeah, guys, I've been so happy to be here. You know, so I want to thank Blizzard for, for bringing me in. And I want to thank uh, you, Jared, you know, for doing an excellent job this whole weekend. Yeah. You know, obviously, it was, it was fun commentating with you, getting a chance to do it in the finals. Pretty awesome. And uh, thank you, obviously, to all the fans, guys. Uh, so much for giving, you know, all your support to us, to the teams throughout the weekend. So that's it for me, guys, this weekend. Jared, any last words? 
I love World of Warcraft PvP. I love being on stage, watching these matches. It makes me go home and just queue so many arena games every time. Yeah, all right, guys. Well, that's it. We're going to head over to the stage with Zoe for the winner's interview. Thank you so much, Sherrod and Isaac. That was absolutely amazing. Skillcap did take it, and we're going to get that ceremony on its way. And for that, I need some help here on stage. So please, welcome here, Brian Honska. Brian Holinka has been casting throughout the weekend, kind of lost his voice as well, but he will help me still. He is the PvP designer of that game, and uh, we will now get our winners here. And you know who those are. Please welcome to the stage Talbadar, Soda, and Janimal! Skillcap took the victory, 105,000. Dollars. And not only do they get the title and the money, but also very, very, very awesome trophies. But before that, I just want to quickly pick your brain. Soda, you've been so close to this title before, and now it finally happened. I can't even begin to think what must go on inside you, but maybe, maybe just try to explain it to the audience what this means to you. Um, it would have meant more if it was a closer game, but um, I'm it's not insulting, but it's just, it was so epic in 2010 when it was tied 2-2 and um, the game timed out and then, you know, it was just so close and I, there was so much more emotion there, but I, I was really emotional today too. And um, I don't know, I'm just so happy that I could win it with Channimals and Talbadar and I think um, I owe it to them really um, for carrying me here today. They did amazing, amazing things today. They did so much damage and I appreciate that. So yeah. But it was a blast, and we did see the emotions boiling high. I mean, I think you pushed even over a chair. I totally saw that coming. So please, once more, a big round of applause for our winner. And we will now hand out our trophies, the hooded guardians of the dark portal. Brian Holinka will provide you with those alongside the title, as well as, of course, $105,000. Our champion, BlizzCon 2013, the World of Warcraft. Arena Grand Finals are coming to an end with a very convincing series of those teams, but I really want to thank all those teams who played throughout the tournament yesterday as well as today. It's been amazing to watch them play it out. The emotions were falling high. I want to thank everyone who came here to the venue and watched it, cheering for those teams. And of course, our lovely casters, Josh and Adam and Jared, and as well as, of course, Isaac. They did an amazing job casting that. So please, one more round of applause for everyone involved. It's been such a great experience. I thank you all for tuning in from home. It was nice having you here as well, and we very much hope to see you again next year. So thank you and goodbye. Light and Shadow. Priest abilities are based on defense and manipulation, including Psychic Scream, a short-range multi-target fear, Spectral Guise, which allows them to disappear for a short time, and Pain Suppression, which causes an ally to take significantly less damage temporarily. To ask why we fight is to ask why the leaves fall. It is in their nature. Perhaps there is a better question.
Why do we fight? To protect home and family. To preserve balance and bring harmony. For my kind, the true question is, what is worth fighting for? Shaman, master of the elements. Shaman have strong utility spells, including Hex, which temporarily turns an opponent into a harmless frog. Tremor Totem, which breaks all fear, charm, and sleep effects on nearby party members. And Thunderstorm, which knocks nearby enemies away.